Hi, and welcome back to this video series on object-oriented programming in Python. In the previous videos, we learned about object-oriented programming. Um, we looked at how to define classes, create objects, use inheritance, use abstract methods, polymorphism. And now we're looking at something that was introduced into Python 3.7, which is called data class. Now, data classes are really helpful. They are particularly good at just um, being used to store data about a particular object. Maybe it's uh, network information. Um, maybe it's things that you don't really want to change. And they're really good because you don't have to include loads of boilerplate. What do I mean by boilerplate? Well, here's an example. If I create a normal object or class called point, uh, I would have to create the initialization method. Um, I might have to uh, write my own methods for checking if one object of point of class point is equal to another point object. Um, you can you can do that for things like add, greater than, less than, using these special Dunder methods. I'd have to do quite a bit. A data class me class method doesn't need any of that stuff. It handles it all for you. So how do we go about doing it? Well, let's convert this into a new version. So we're going to go into a data class version. So we're going to import from data classes. We're going to import data class. And then what we're going to do is we're going to decorate this uh, with the data class uh, decorator. Okay. I can now do away with this initialization. I'm going to set the um, the uh, the attributes for this class as uh, let's go with a float and a float. No, I haven't had to do any of the self stuff. I'm just saying this data class object is going to have an X attribute, a Y attribute. They're both going to be floats. I can also do away with the equal stuff and we are pretty much there. Now what we can do is we can create a new data point. So let's just create a data point called P uh, and we're going to call it point. And I'm going to pass in um some value so let's go three and four okay so three is automatically going to go into x four is automatically going to go into y then i can do just like we did before p dot x and let's print uh p dot y okay so let's just check what's going on here okay so oh what what have i done wrong here Point and point. Yep, I know what the error was. I always do this. And again, I'm keeping the errors in so you don't make the same mistakes. We use colons, not equals. Okay, so it's a bit more like a dictionary. So let's run that again. Right, so point X and Y, we now have three and four. Right, all good. So uh, what can we do with this then? Now we can we can update this at the moment. We can do p dot x equals five and p dot y equals uh, six oops equals six and we can print those again and we can see that the outputs change so let's run that so we get three four originally and then five and six so we can do all the same sort of things before but again no boilerplate really really easy we can also check to see if um something is well let's let's see how it's represented so we don't have to worry about printing an object sometimes if you if you try to print an object before you probably would have noticed that um you get some weird weird behavior let me go back to one of our original um lessons back here if i try to print andy you'll see that i'm going to get some weird uh output here so here, when I printed Andy, I get this. This is basically the object's address in uh, me or memory address location, right? That's a pain. In order to fix that, you have to write some special um, some special code. So you have to use def in, uh, repr, and you write self, and then you would write some like some sort of string. So you return a string, whatever you want. Hello, I'm just gonna write hello for now. And then if I wanted to do def, I'd have to write def string. Um, and I would write return. And, uh, well, actually, I should write hello here, hello here. I am a person. And here I'm going to return self dot underscore um, string. That's probably the better way to do it. 
Now, when I run this code, you see I get the correct kind of output. Hello, I'm a person, uh, but I've had to write all this extra bit of code. It's a real faff. So let's look back at this data class one. What can I do here? Well, let's say I just want to print the object. So P, what do I get? I get a useful input or output, I should say. Look, I've got point. It tells me it's a class point. It tells me what the values are set to, the attributes are set to. That's really useful. And I can also do things like this. Remember uh, what I said about the uh, equal is equal to function? Well, it's already got that built in. So I can write something like print um, eq, and I'm going to do p for the object I'm doing it. I'm going to check to see if another point class, another point object is equal to uh, five and six. This one should return true. Okay. And I'll do the same thing again, eq, p, point, and I'll just do one and two. And this one should return false. Okay, so let's just check that. Uh, All right, we'll just change that code, that's fine. Um, forget that bit, we'll just do it like this. P is equal to that, let's do it that way. That makes more sense to us anyway. Right. Run that. Oh, get rid of those extra brackets. Oops. Get rid of that as well. Don't like spelling mistakes. And there we go. We get true and false. So here we've got the built-in equalizer, uh, equal checker. So we're just seeing is one is RP equal to a class that we haven't actually created. We've just kind of said, oh, I want a point of this, of this uh, with these values five and six. So again, that's really, that's really helpful. So there's an example of a uh, Python data class. Um, it's, it's a really useful tool. I re highly recommend that you look at the uh, documentation for it. Um, again, I've included my mistakes. I'll always include my mistakes. I think it's really important that you see those so you can see how you can correct them because it's likely that you're going to come across them yourself and it's okay to make mistakes. That's what I want you to get at. Loads of people on YouTube will always avoid showing mistakes. I don't. I think it's really important that you see them. So um, anyway, happy programming, and I'll see you in the next video tutorial.